Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So we did this one yesterday uh, over on EE Arts, our morning coffee videos. It felt extremely important to get across. Right now, um, there is so much going on geopolitically, obviously, um, weather and war, war and weather. And yet the most important thing is really the spiritual aspects of everything that's going on because that is, that's everything. It really is. We are, again, uh, spiritual beings. We are not the body. The body is our vehicle for exploration. And, you know, yet again, the focus right now for so many is, is, is going to be based on survival in a, in a real physical sense. And also, um, you know, it's natural to feel a lot of emotions right now. There's there's so many things coming up for many, many people. And, you know, you'll I don't know if you guys have felt it. We felt it. We know friends that have felt it. Certain things coming up that uh, they either are really, really happy with or they're just not very happy with or they're struggling to get through it. And that's where we're at. But it is tied into everything that we have going on. The, the the news aspect of things. The weather aspect of things. I mean, this I've never seen uh, the news and the spiritual aspect of everything tied together so tightly. But this is to be expected because the dimensions are starting to come together. Which can be very uncomfortable. So we have the 3D tying into the 4D in ways that I've never seen before. I've just never seen this before. And here we are. <laughs> we have arrived. We're here. And we're helping to merge these densities together. And it's going to take some work. It's going to take some doing. Many of you starseeds out there who are starseeds, lightworkers, who know what you're here for, yes, you're going to bear a, a large brunt of what is going on um, but know that you're doing this for other people other people who might not be aware but are very very innocent absolutely and this was talking about the second moon that is in place which is no moon just as we're going to be talking about some things uh, that are not what they seem to be well at least what they're given to be by the control system uh, it should be pretty obvious. It really should be pretty obvious to most of the world at this point. I'm not sure if we're at most of the world, but we're we're creeping up there that you can't trust anything from the control system at all. Anything, nothing, other than the fact that they're going to lie <laughs> and they're going to distort. Um, but this second moon that comes and briefly stays with us and then goes is, is a ship. And Cindy was picking up from the guides, uh, which again, our guides are uh, quite a collective. And you have guides too, whether you communicate to them or not. They are there. Every single embodied person has guides. And unfortunately, most of the people in the world are not in direct communication with those beings that are there to help them navigate through these times. And that is really a byproduct of the control system putting it in uh, as a fear-based mindset that you shouldn't talk to anything but the control system. Go through the official channels. That's what they'll tell you, right? The official channels, not, not the un unofficial channels. Oh, man. Here we have another hurricane coming in. We're going to focus on Milton a little more uh, farther down into the video. But just note that they're asking people to evacuate, lots of people to evacuate, to take it seriously. Absolutely take it seriously. Largest evacuation since Irma in 2017. And I was in Sarasota for Irma. And, and you know, it was like, do I stay or do I go now? That song, right? And I decided to go because I felt that, I felt, well, really, I felt my ancestors calling me to go to um, New Mexico. And I'd always gotten the message that when these times came to go to New Mexico, 
and I and Cindy and I did end up going to New Mexico and living there for about a year and I loved it in the sense of peace and clarity and yes we were able to communicate to our guides uh, perhaps clearer and easier there than anywhere I've been yet uh, yet for lockdown it was uh, a disaster and as you know the governor there is very very uh, off to the left and so you know it wasn't that we were supposed to stay in New Mexico um, although we probably would have if if it was different uh, different governance if it was governed more like Texas or uh, maybe Arkansas Oklahoma or some of the other states are a little bit more towards the red side but yet it was um, a period to prepare spiritually and right now we have a little bit of time to prepare spiritual spiritually as the blows are being uh, thrown at us so this is obviously going to be a very very major event uh, let's put all of our intention out there that we can weaken this storm and that we can call on uh, the elemental energies that really work at maintaining this creation for us to explore to to help to mitigate the damage from this storm and save lives may every person out there be listening to their guides because that's the key in in survival it really is that which we call the intu intuition you know your gut your hunch it, it's listening to the guides and listening to um, that which makes up yourself and your consciousness as you're not really a singular entity you're really this massive <laughs> you you are trillions of entities when you get down to individual cells which each are a unit of consciousness and the bacteria that lives in your your body itself is it's all consciousness you are many many beings that that you are really as a collective moving your universe uh, around and you affect just billions and trillions uh, of other entities and as we interact with each other that just expands outward and so um, this is something to, to note listen listen and how do we listen um, just take time to breathe and just keep track of your breathing put when you put your feet on the ground really feel the ground feel the energy feel the waves of energy that come through the ground into your feet tap into that and listen because there are beings elemental in nature um, that can give you information hunches intuition that literally can save your lives mm -hmm. uh, yeah it, it is it's that quieting of the mind so you can hear you can hear what else is going on i mean some of you are natural protectors of your area and i i know because i've talked to you and i can feel that energy of protection but if you are told to move then move but um definitely keep yourself safe first uh this is a time of prioritizing i i would even have things ready but i i'm so concerned that if many people wait until things are ready and they try to go they might not get out of there i think a lot of people in uh and the carolinas did just that you know they they were hoping that uh the waters would recede in time and and it didn't it didn't and i think we have to take a cold hard look at reality and what we're dealing with and we're dealing with some very malevolent entities who are just trying to blame this on us on climate change on the earth on the sun absolutely not that's that's not what this is these entities are playing god they're the gods of your bible and they've had control over the weather for a very long time so these are definitely technologies that we wouldn't understand if we saw them but i do know that there's lasers involved we have seen that we've seen lasers involved there's implants in the earth involved there's two there's two elements involved with all of these storms and they use them to activate and they use other other methods and it's just a, it's a reality that's our cold hard reality once you look at this for long enough you understand that it really behooves them to stay in the dark and do with exactly what they're doing 
and as Cindy was saying, um, going through that, I just wanted to bring in cases of people in Maui that were told to go a certain way and something told them not to. And the only reason they're here now is because they listened to the little voice and not what they were being herded into doing and going. So, yeah, this is uh, very severe. It, it's coming. It's something that um, I've, I've known since a teenager. You know, all this that we see is, is just a, it, it's something that's going to pass. Now, we can mitigate the damage by waking up as many as people and alerting people to what's coming. Talk about signs. Here you go. Mesmerizing footage shows comets soaring over San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge. Yes, this is that one that we were talking about. And yeah, you know, it's it's going to, in about a week, uh, around 12th to 14th, it looks like we might have a, a really good opportunity to see it. And here it is over Oklahoma, too. So San Francisco, Oklahoma, uh, many other places, people were able to see this and get uh, capture it. And so uh, comma A3 is putting on a morning display and it's going to continue to be visible through most of the rest of the month, um, especially uh, somewhere around the, the second week, which we are heading into of uh, October 12th to 14th. This period just keeps going through my head not really sure um we're talking about angels and harp and then there's some some demonic entities that play with harp too this is looking down and we've done this in other locations too this is the water around florida what is all that well yeah it's curious is it not again atlantis and uh, Lemuria and Mew and Tartaria and so many other um, victims of redos, you know, that R-E-S-E-T that they said we're going to have. Well, yeah, because they're the ones doing it. And, you know, here we have a lot of stuff that really looks like antennas down there, doesn't it? Yeah, harp positioned perfectly right around Florida. The whole state of Florida, so much of Florida is literally 10 to 12 feet over uh, sea level. And, you know, I, I knew I couldn't stay there. Now, some people are going to ride out storms where they are because, you know, that's their purpose is to bring light into a certain area and to anchor the light. And, and they know this because they're in contact with their higher selves and they, again, practice meditation, uh, mantras and yoga on a daily basis so you know again if, if you've gotten that you're going to ride this storm out come hell or high water where you are because that's really the purpose for this life is to help be a light that will shield and guide others then that's your purpose um you know a lot of people will be called on to help rebuild as as all the chaos um starts to su subside at one point in time when we get through this bumpiest part which is really right now, uh, a lot of people are going to be needed to shine light on, on how do we redo things in a way that's not like the system because we don't want to go down this road again. And um, it makes me think of, of one of our brothers, uh, beloved Big Mike there, who uh, is somebody um, that really learned one aspect of the controller system and even though he was in the controller system, he wasn't of the system and now has a stage in life where he is anchoring light uh, very bravely and is getting direct contact of the kind that we get. And so, you know, we're not alone out here. Uh, there are many, many people that are able to speak clearly and get clear answers from their guides. Uh, including Yeshua, who is, uh, again, Yeshua, the real Yeshua, is, is as high uh, of an ascended master as, as we get on planet Earth. And yet, what did they do? Well, they, they turned it all into a bloody sacrifice. It's not about bloody sacrifice. 
this is something that they seem to love and adore is is just the concept of non-stop bloody sacrifices no greater things you will do he was talking about you guys are asleep you don't realize your power you don't have to go through this you could rise above and beyond and they're just basically um, brainwashing indoctrinating and teaching you that you are something so far less than what we really are mm-hmm. i know um our our big mike and there's some others who are really good examples of people who are in the world but not of it you know they don't uh take on the ways they take on their own ways they follow their own heart they they are not easily manipulated at all in any way shape or form because they know the system they know the system and how it works and they know what they don't like and because they have seen the system function in ways where it, it's just appalling so w- when they spot things in the system it's very easy for them to say hey that's not right this is not okay i'm following my heart i'm not going to do that so a lot of people you know should be in the know when to back out of something that the system is doing that might be leading you down a path and and this is just horrible you know the helicopter flying really low and tossing everything the way they did i mean who who was that pilot it's like we should be able to hold these people accountable in some way shape or form it it was an unmarked black uh helicopter that felt very much like it was some sort of government entity it came down close enough to send all the supplies and and this is again north carolina flying everywhere and disrupt everything and then it just took off this is in burnsville north carolina so you know it it, was it ignorance or was it uh, an act of sabotage you know what do you guys think well i i mean when i feel into it in this situation it really feels like they had some sort of angst they were told something so they're going by their own whatever they were told and sometimes people are told something and then they get angry so they they act on it and there's really no reason for it um but this is something very deliberate that this person had anger in his heart and a lot of us are facing that right now but just because we have anger or fear in our hearts doesn't mean we need to act on it no you know again this is where a lot of people in these times are going to be very very called on to do things that's going to go against the grain <clears throat> or just the opposite you, you know there there's it's it's again a time when we really have to make our choices of you know how do i best serve truly everyone that is our brother our our brothers and sisters here on the planet and and that's you know again including our animal friends this is hurricane helene people finder i'll give you guys uh this spreadsheet where people are adding and um, updating people that are lost and found. You know, uh, there's still a few of our family members that I know are living in this area that haven't heard anything about. Um, Unfortunately, with some of them, I I just know uh, their first name or their their, um, little icon when they make comments but i know that uh there was this one family that um was living in the area that I still haven't seen anything from and so you know hopefully uh everybody will be found it, it's crazy out there it really really is crazy um so i'll give you guys the links and and you can uh take a look yourself and see If there's somebody that has been found and maybe you were worried about it and then there's somebody that the whole world would like to see take the next uh, next rocket or whatever next vehicle hop on a comet and take your butt to Mars HRC and literally she literally says uh, and I'll I'll give you guys the links um, you got to mass censor people this is a time where we can't have people you know speaking up and you know speaking out be because we're going to lose total control yeah you are going to lose total control you are losing control and just wait you know wait a little bit longer and another person said 
Do you remember when uh, you guys had made that statement, Cindy, when she was channeling uh, the Galactic Federation, uh, said that, and this was way back, um, this was way back, I think, in 2020 or 2021, that come 2025, you will not see them out in public. You will not see them out in public because people will have understood to a big enough percentage of what the control system really is. And uh, we're getting there. FBI warns of potential violent attacks on October 7th. This is because it's it's one year um, from the surprise, surprise, uh, 2023, October 7, uh, HAMAS attack on Israel. Again, we understand that, the, you know, things are not as they are meant to, you know, look like. And unfortunately, still too many people just automatically trust whatever it is uh, the mainstream puts out there the reality is again everything has been scripted it, it's been drawn out for such long periods of time that people um, still will have har- a hard time understanding the bigger perspective when you look and I do see people now in droves when somebody says something like well this is just an act of God and and people will just be like no no, and and say things like you know they they've been able to control the weather since uh, whatever 60s 70s Operation Popeye, or farther back 70 80 years now. This has been for thousands of years because again the ultimate controllers are not uh, Homo sapiens sapiens. What happened uh, to the Mana Wanui on Samoa? This was a ship that ran aground on a reef and sunk a huge ship um you know again there seems like they're blaming the captain but it was weird because cindy got the feel that this might have been actually uh, not a reef but but something else you know it was really really strange this energy that i got first uh what came in was this is a a live conscious entity and then it came in that there was machinery involved so i i'm not exactly sure what this was but it's something that's very very odd that i have never experienced before i have not experienced um the machine and consciousness put together so i i don't know it's just really strange and it feels very nefarious and it feels very deliberate well you know that that ties into the uh crazy dreams i had last night um which it sometimes i feel like the higher self gives me glimpses of life on other planets that the control system is doing this to Uh, but yeah beings flesh and blood and machines cyborgs uh, and who knows, you know, if there's <laughs> cyborg uh, th- creatures out there that are gigantic. Now, this, this is Mount Adams, Washington's largest active volcano. Mount Adams has record-breaking earthquake spike. And been meaning to bring this up because when I showed this to Cindy, Cindy said, yes, this, this is what it looked like when she got the vision of uh, the U.S. Um, and war on U.S. soil when there was volcanic activity in what we took to be the Pacific Northwest. And she kept describing this uh, vision of a mountain and then trees and a field. I know. When I saw this, it's like, okay, this is it. And I'm sure there's other volcanoes that have this pattern to them as well. But what really sticks out is the vision. It was obviously a volcano and then the pine trees, the pine trees everywhere. So this is really interesting and it's active again. I think maybe the guides gave a a good stab at a date. It's just almost impossible um, to to do a date you know and we may have been a little bit off as well now i'm not saying that this is absolutely the thing that's going to trigger anything i'm saying i was given that vision for a reason and there's something to it so i just feel like i need to pay attention to it 
Yeah, the timelines are never set in stone, and they are very pliable because we have all these different consciousnesses interacting with each other. And, you know, what, when we look back to the second um, comet and the second eclipse, that was in April. April 8th, right, 482024 was a big, big date. Um, so it we're basically six months behind is what it looks like at this point in time. And is that... Uh, due to consciousness yeah absolutely you know because again it, it's it's all about consciousness everything you're seeing is for consciousness to experience and learn and grow from this is what portions of florida's west coast looks like right now and think about this this is all from helene and now milton's going to be there in just a matter of a couple of days Oh boy, you know, this is again uh, piling insult onto injury. As you see, Milton is going to be a cat four, uh, according to the projections, and some even say cat five. And what's happening is Milton's being squished into this narrow corridor between uh, a, a, cold, um, a cold pressure system up to the north and in one below in the south and it's squishing it into this narrow corridor which is just aiming straight at florida so is it going to be a florida impact yeah it doesn't look like there's anything else it could really do um but go to florida but as far as how bad that's something i think again we we can influence by putting out our intent understand that there are these consciousnesses elemental in nature that tend to everything so when we talk about the four elements earth air fire and water we are talking about these more rudimentary consciousnesses that literally are taking human intent and and the intention of other beings as well and literally sculpting our reality for us and so if we are asking them this is why also we, we definitely pray or put our intent out over our food our drink you know it, it's so important to to set the intent because your cells in your body listen to you and these elemental beings that are part of the david kingdom they listen to you too and so uh, why would they listen to you well because you're a fractal of source and that's huge because source is is consciousness ultimately of which we are all a part if again i've said this many times if god is all knowing then why does he say where are you to adam and eve you know it, it's obviously not source because again source is omnipresent which means that it has to be in us too couldn't be any other way so if source is in you then you know why do you need any middlemen why do you need any dogma why do you need any sort of structure or organization all you need to do really is go within and yet there's no power in that for parasitic entities and that's why they've they've created the power structure that they have in order to get us to manifest their uh, desired outcome, which is to basically uh, feed off of the energies of everything on the planet. So we can put out the intent that this storm be lowered. I, I think, again, many prophecies are given with the idea that they will be fulfilled. And then I think there's also the idea that they won't be fulfilled because we'll know what, what path not to go. So, you know, it is more than likely going to be the case that the west coast of Florida is going to be impacted. Um, do I think that if we really truly had maybe, you know, a couple million people really understanding their power and focusing on this, yeah, we probably could even dissipate it into a non-event. I, I think that it is a real possibility. Mm -hmm. You know, I do want to start setting aside some time maybe um, for right now until we can get until we can do a live uh, having people say 
between the hours of 5 and 7 central, sit down and make the intent that the storm backs way, way off and that everybody is safe. And that way, at least we all have a focused time and a focused effort because I do think we can make a big difference. Um, it, it, it's something that we've seen before. We've seen people do this before who are able to send out their consciousness and send out their intention, their goodwill intention, and help things be better. We can do this. There is a lot of us. And if a lot of us <laughs> just make the effort at the same time, we're going to be doing it between those hours as well. Might not be the entire two hours, but we are going to be doing it at that time. Uh, let's just let's just give it a shot. Yeah, the reality is, as we look at the spaghetti models, um, some things seem to have to happen <clears throat> in order to bring about a realization. If we didn't have all the things happening where people are starting to realize, you know, what happened in North Carolina could happen anywhere, um, and it really could, and and that you're not going to be able to count on the political structure you're not going to be able to count on any of those organizations like fema or you know cdc fda the un the who the wef if we didn't have these events happen to where it triggers in the mind an awakening then maybe we would sleep you know sleepwalk ourselves completely off a cliff as a collective yeah, I mean, it's just something that we need to take a cold, hard look. And, you know, if you walk in awareness and you walk with the understanding that and, and know what is going on, you make different choices. It changes your perception of what we're dealing with. So, you know, again, from the Big Bend um, all the way down, uh, really to Naples, you need to be on, on the lookout. And this is more than likely going to cross the entirety of the Florida Peninsula and still emerge, they're saying, as a Cat 1 on the other side. So most likely the impact is going to be at a Cat 3 or Cat 4 at this point in time. Of course, that can go higher or it can go lower as well. And in some ways, we, we need to look at this as um, a real wake-up call and to start using our potential to manifest and some will say and i've seen this before so many times why are you giving attention to it because you're going to help create it no how if you're going to just turn your back away then you're just turning your back away and everybody that needs help you know if you if you go and stick your head in the sand the the people in florida still get steamrolled the people in west you know western north carolina got steamrolled it's speaking up about this. It's pointing things out <clears throat> as to, you know, the real nature of what's going on. That's the only way you're going to get real change. You have to point out what's going on and don't 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 feed the the negative emotions. This is where creating a sense of Buddhist detachment comes in. So when we look at storm surge, you can see the Tampa Bay area um you know, maybe up as, as far as um, Tarpon Springs and, and Spring Hill and even past that, going all the way down to Englewood, this is going to, this is looking like the worst of the uh, tidal surge area of 8 to 12 feet. Remember, we were seeing 12 to 18 feet in uh, the last one. Now, the last storm was, was bigger. This one is going to be a little more compact. At least that's how it's looking now. Um, which means it could be more changeable. It, it could be more devastating in a, in a tighter area. Um, but if it does go and starts to run into wind shear, that will cause it to lose steam as it goes on shore, which would end up spreading out the storm surge potential. But, you know, it would spread it out, and at the same time, it would also... Um, create a little bit less likelihood for you know the huge impact in one local area um, again probably the very very worst uh, scenario for um, the most amount of people because again uh, the biggest the biggest number of people are living in Tampa Bay um, would be just slightly to the north of Tampa Bay would be about the worst scenario um, there's still a lot of people all along this whole coast. So, 
you know, absolutely um, what they were saying. Uh, they were just coming out and saying, you know, the storm surge is going to be probably not survivable if you are literally going to, you know, root yourself in, in your waterfront home. It's not going to be survivable. We've seen so many roofs that have been completely washed over. You know, I, I do hope that nature and how things occur naturally is going to help slow this down. But please don't forget, you are part of nature. You have your own ability to help slow this down and help dissolve it. So do please take that time and sit down and, and take a few moments and put your protection over those who are in danger and also uh, you know, put your put your intent to have this storm just dissipate as quickly as possible. So we have uh, K L and M. So we have Kirk here, and then Leslie and Milton. And it's uh, looking at the cone for Kirk. This person says, uh, "I have never seen the National Hurricane Center cone extend into Germany and Denmark from an Atlantic storm." These are not normal times. Uh, they are now starting to show us uh, the reality of the situation. So, you know, again, put your prayers and intention out there, too. This should not be, uh, obviously, by the time it gets into this area, going through colder waters, it won't be strengthening. The danger there is slow moving. Um, so hopefully it won't be slow moving. It's moving northeast at 25 miles an hour, which is not slow. So that's, that's good. You know, get in and out quick and you won't get that massive flooding. Um, as far as myself, this is a video that I, I published in January of 2018, um, which was a republish because I had published it before. Um, in 2017, um, but uh, Evolutionary had taken it down. And this, this is where, going way back to January 2018, I was sharing visions of what I had seen. And I do feel that we are in those times now. A lot of this I didn't understand. You know, I, I was focused on the U.S. and I was focusing on things like drones, which back there in... Um, 19 i was thinking in at the time making this video that it was uh 85 but then i realized that you know, i was still in high school when when some of these things came through they actually came through in history class i was just zoning out and getting flashes and then i would have these dreams with a lot more details that would come through so you know it was starting about 83 that i started to see these things and like these eyes that watch us and we could we could understand what that is uh now when you when you know drones and the fact that yeah we're never alone you know big brother's always watching everything we do and you know that it's all the technology um i did see something that i didn't know if it was uh, an alien invasion or if it was a military invasion but then i started to get these um dreams and visions um that were definitely military and what i saw because this this would happen like every so many years i would get more information you know, and and more details. I'll share a little bit. Living up in Connecticut, and then once I had the dream in South Carolina, that was the clearest. And um, where I'm seeing the troops, it's very warm. It feels like it's somewhere in the southeastern United States, yeah, you know, where I currently am living. Um, and I can see them clearly being dropped from helicopters in mass, and it's cloudy and there's like helicopters that pop into these big dark you know rain clouds that you get down south and then pop out and different troops dropping down and people are running and people are you know becoming refugees and they're they're moving away from the coast and they're moving up especially from south florida because it feels like south florida is a place where troops have landed and not ours so here it feels like the united states is being invaded um the only thing that more the logical mind is saying is basically 
Russia, China, um, and others um, are the ones doing it. But I didn't see those troops, but I, I knew and kept hearing from people that they've landed, you know, down around Miami and down around the Everglades and they're moving on up and there's a huge refugee swell of people rushing away from that area and heading up northward trying to get up away from where the troops have landed. And I also feel in those dreams there's troops coming uh, in from like Mexico as well as coming down from Alaska and Canada into the United States as well and people are just in a panic and people are just running and becoming refugees and in mass and I'm in there with them and I'm ca helping carry this older man who had two feet blown off from something some sort of explosion so he's missing his feet and I know we have to climb some steps and it's really hard getting them up the steps wherever we are and that was something that stuck with me and so it's uh, that part's always stuck with me and then at that point I remember hearing people say they're only 20 miles behind us and heading this way so it was a feeling of well you know it's no way we're gonna outrun them with this huge refugee population and it's just a very, um, it was a very scary uh, thing and scary dream. So I definitely felt that troops were coming in from Alaska, Canada, coming down. Definitely felt troops coming in from Mexico and from Florida. Um, and the first time I had this dream was before I did like research into all the prophecies of what's going to happen, like with Washington's vision. Um, I had read the Bible at that point already um, many times, but I never really connected and thought about the fact that the United States could be Babylon the Great. And yeah, and that whole thing again, Washington's vision and stuff. And you know, again, getting into the fact that they want to create a civil war condition before. Uh, this all happens so it feels like we are in the thick of it um, the area that I did see people moving away from uh, in specific in my mind was the west coast of Florida that's where I saw myself situated in the west coast of Florida and when I think about the way they use weather as a warfare tool this is exactly what you would do right before um, this could be exactly what they're doing right before the actual uh, military strikes is again causing all sorts of disruption hammering the first blows being you know done through weather and hitting that west coast uh, before the actual attack on the u.s uh, happens you know when i when i watch um how things are done how the the cycles of life go on and how how the light and the dark work together in some ways i think we're going to be faced with a situation or we're we're going to need to hold on to the light a, as tight as possible find those little things that we are really really happy about and really cling to that and the other thing that helps me get through really hard times is if i see the darkness do something i know through personal experience that the light is going to utilize that to make the situation better for everyone involved the light has a lot of power a lot more power than the dark if you if you take a candle into a really dark room that candle is going to light up most of the room so don't forget how powerful the light is and call on it and utilize it and if you can't see it find it, it it's there it's always there yeah as this says they weren't gods they just had technology absolutely and it's still the case to the, to this day um and and they do uh kind of take um, they kind of gloat over the fact that they view themselves as, as the gods of our uh, Abrahamic tradition. Oh my gosh, the ego, the ego, the ego that these entities have is just absolutely 
incredible. And people, sometimes people have that ego too. And it, it's something that they, they, they use to control us, you know, is the ego. That's why it's really important. I, you know, I've heard about things where people say, oh, have an ego death. No, 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 no. You want to be able to control that ego. And because if you don't control it, it's going to control you. Absolutely. As you see, these, these guard dogs are doing their job, and yet they're, they're kind of having a good time on the swing there. Uh-oh, what, what are you guys doing? Is this some sort of strange cat-dog love affair? I, I don't know. Strange times, absolutely. It's different. It is. Again, thank you for your support on Patreon. Uh, we couldn't do it without you guys, and, you know, it, it really is appreciated. Uh, Kelsey and Todd are our newest patrons, so thank you, Kelsey. Thank you, Todd. Uh, again, there are ex very unique videos going up there at least once, sometimes two or three times a week. Source bless and namaste. Looking forward to your comments. Source bless. Namaste. Namaste.